So, this is how you keep kids safe. If Congress really wanted to keep kids safe, they would pass a bill that says, for every $1 in U.S. foreign aid that we give out, $1 has to go to U.S. classrooms for security. Why haven't they done that? Why am I just a dumb fucking construction worker? Why am I the only one to fucking think of that? You know, let's start... In the Marine Corps, we have a thing called backward planning. So you start from the very end and solve the problem from that point. Why was he able to get into the classroom? Let's start right there. Why are we sending $54 billion to Ukraine and not sending $54 billion to schools to have door, bulletproof doors that lock? Period. You don't know it. You, you want, why did he do it? That's what you want to address. Why can't you fix that? This kid was raised by his grandma. Doesn't that tell you anything about how broken the family system is in America? If he had a dad in his life, I or even a strong mom. So he had no dad in his life and his mom was off doing drugs, so grandma had to raise him. Hello! Welcome back, everybody! Do you understand? If, if we're going to place restrictions on something that kills a hundred kids a year, then we have to place those exact restrictions on everything that kills more than a hundred kids per year because we're concerned with saving lives. If you find a fallacy in that, you're a fucking hypocrite. Because you don't want to save kids. You just want to ban guns. And I'm fine if you want to ban guns. You can't have mine. I love my guns. I'm actually driving right now to my horse to make a video about the Tech Pack Glock Box 4.0 about my guns. And the other thing that you idiots don't understand is every time one of these things happen, you want to attack the NRA. I don't like the NRA because I think they're a bunch of fucking fear mongers that just want your money for the exact same reason that Democrats want your money. The NRA wants your money because they're like, oh, we're going to protect your right to bear arms. Bitch, I don't need you to, pr <laughs> to protect my right to bear arms. I have arms. If somebody wants to infringe on my right to bear arms, they are more than welcome to come over to my house and try it. I don't need you. I have me. I am well trained. And I have my guns. I don't need the NRA to protect my rights. I'm not giving them money. Just like the idiots on the left, they want the issue. They want to scare you into thinking that idiots like me are going to break into your house and steal your shit or shoot you up. No! Pe members of the gun community, the actual legitimate gun community, aren't shooting up schools. Members of the gun community are the people out there going out to the rifle range, doing everything right, helping each other out. Oh, you know, I, I don't understand. Like, you know, I, I always hit low to the left. Oh, well, here, let me help you. Uh, you know, maybe if you pull your right foot uh, back to the left a little bit, that might help you with your natural point of aim. To help you pull your natural point of aim more to the right. Oh, let's take a look at your let's take a look at your pistol. Oh yeah, no, maybe let's you know let's push your uh, your side cover one way or the other. Maybe that'll help you get back in the zero. Uh, maybe we concentrate on 
your uh, breathe, relax, aim, stop skill, your actual, you know, trigger control. That's what the gun community is. The gun community is, look at my girl Redbird. I've never met this. I love Redbird so much. So um, I'll link to her channel below. Never met her in person, but she is a member of the gun community. When you think of gun, don't think of me. I'm a, I'm an idiot. Don't think of me when you think of gun community. Think of Redbird. She's a total sweetheart. Has guns. You know. I don't think that she's ever shut up a school. Don't quote me on that. I haven't uh, done the actual research, but I'm pretty sure her and the other a hundred million of us gun owners didn't shoot up a school yesterday. So you assholes want to punish a hundred million people for the acts of one asshole. You're just, you wanna, you wanna address the why. That's what you wanna do. You don't know, you, you want, why did he do it? That's what you want to address. Why can't you fix that? This kid was raised by his grandma. Doesn't that tell you anything about how broken the family system is in America? If he had a dad in his life, I or even a strong mom. So he had no dad in his life and his mom was off doing drugs. So grandma had to raise him. Hello. A lot of gun rights folks are like, well, I'm against background checks. I, honestly, I don't care. Have a background check. I like I would prefer background checks. I'm a staunch 2A advocate. And I'm a libertarian, which means I'm a Jeffersonian, you know, m more laws create less freedom, I believe is what he said. But in this case, look, I agree with the left. We should have... Uh, background checks. I'm not against that. I don't think that... I don't think they should be as strict as California where you have to wait 10 days. Uh, I mean, we live in a digital age, folks. 10 days is an eternity. And in California... You can only buy one pistol every 30 days. And why? That makes no fucking sense. You're like, okay, well, I got one pistol, and I'm totally going to kill that motherfucker if I just had two pistols. So now i got to wait 30 days, and I hope he doesn't default on his rent and get evicted because I know where he lives. So I'm like waiting on that 30 days to come around so I can go kill that mother. Because one pistol won't do it. i got to wait that 30 days to get that second pistol. No. Like, I believe in common sense. And here's the thing that idiots don't understand. Common sense gun laws mean fucking common sense. Means if I want to walk in and I go, hey, you know, uh, there's this idiot... Biden is going to be elected into office. He's a retard. He can't even fucking finish a sentence. And he's going to undo all of these great rules and laws that have kept our country prosperous and mostly crime free. I need to protect my family. I got my wife, uh, my two adult teenage daughters that are going to college. And uh, my 17-year-old son. So I, I need to go and buy, you know, five pistols. So that everybody can have a pistol. In case some asshole that George Gascon won't prosecute. George Gascon, that motherfucker, he's the DA for L.A. County. If somebody breaks into your house, holds you at gunpoint while he rapes your wife, then kills your wife... 
He's only going to charge him for rape. No special circumstances. He's going to, oh, rape, well, he'll be out in five years. Really? You're going to hold, he's going to hold me at gunpoint, make me watch him rape my wife, and then kill my wife, and he's only going to get charged with rape. Yeah, I'm this guy up right now. That's George Gascon, the DA of L.A. So, like, I just posted a video uh, two days ago, and this happens all the time, but because of the, we have a gun problem in America, propaganda being pushed by the left, no, we don't have a gun problem, we have a mental health problem. You have to address the why. Why did this kid feel that it would be okay to go and kill elementary school kids? Why? You know, let's start. In the Marine Corps, we have a thing called backward planning. So you start from the very end and solve the problem from that point. Why was he able to get into the classroom? Let's start right there. Why are we sending $54 billion to Ukraine and not sending $54 billion to schools to have door, bulletproof doors that lock? Period. Every school in America should have a bulletproof door with bulletproof glass that you can look through instead of sending 54 billion dollars to Ukraine because that's a fucking money laundering scheme. <coughs> See, the politicians send all of your tax money over to Ukraine. They buy armaments from like, I don't know, like, uh, I don't want to say the names, but like, you know, Lockheed, Skunk Works, um, you know, the people that make missiles and people that make uh, aircraft. Those people take that money in and then who do they give it to? They donate it to politicians so that they can get reelected. So it's a big money laundering scheme. People like to call it the military industrial complex. I don't know. I don't like that term because I think it's an easy way out. I think that we should call everybody out individually. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to get kicked off of YouTube. So, anyway, if you want to keep kids safe, this is my exit. Go on to my horse! Actually, my voice is hoarse. I've been fighting a cold the last couple of weeks. But I still go to work. So, this is how you keep kids safe. If Congress really wanted to keep kids safe, they would pass a bill that says, for every $1 in U.S. foreign aid that we give out, $1 has to go to U.S. classrooms for security. Why haven't they done that? Why am I just a dumb fucking construction worker? Why am I the only one to fucking think of that? So that way, okay, we send 23 or 28 billion dollars, 30 billion basically, to Ukraine to fight the proxy war. That's fine. I'm cool with that. But now we have to give 30 billion. Look at this guy. Hell yeah, brother. Now we have to give 30 billion to put bulletproof doors on classrooms to keep our fucking children safe. Why the fuck are we giving all of our money away to other countries and we are unwilling to protect our children? Banning a, a gun won't work. You can ban every gun you want. It doesn't matter. If you can't physically protect the children, you have fucking lost. Because that kid 
could have walked into that classroom with a fucking machete and killed the exact same number of kids. And it would have been quieter. Nobody would have known about it. He could have walked into the next classroom and killed another two teachers and another 29 kids. Because if you're telling me that if I can walk into a classroom with a machete, if I can walk into a classroom with an AR-15, I can walk into a classroom with a machete. I can fucking decapitate the two teachers. And what chance do 19 fucking 10 year olds have against me with a machete the doors at my back where are they gonna go I guarantee you I could fucking kill every single fucking kid in there with a machete nobody would know about it then I'd go to the next classroom kill those two teachers with a machete first then kill all those 19 kids go to the next classroom and the only time that they would find out is when the janitor randomly comes walking by and is like, why is all this blood in the, in the hallway? I just mopped this hallway. When he starts opening up doors and there's a bunch of kids dead. So like I said, unless you address the why, the only thing that's going to change is the how. So how he kills those kids. So he goes in there with a the machete. Or maybe he waits with his truck outside. Waits for 50 kids to walk across the crosswalk. Runs them over with his big old truck. So. I'm, I'm so. Then you get all these commercials on YouTube from the, the parents who are like, Oh, I lost my child in a school shooting. So the fuck what? More kids are drowned in swimming pools. Why aren't you speaking up for those kids? More kids are killed by domestic abuse. Why aren't you sticking up for those kids? Oh, and this is why we have school shooters. Because we have parents that only care about themselves and about their kids. That's why we have school shooters. If these idiots cared anything other than themselves, if, if they weren't so fucking selfish to only care about themselves and their problems, we wouldn't have school shooters. Because this didn't happen when I was growing up. When I was growing up, there were no school shootings. Look at the time record. I graduated high school in 1991. We had a school officer. His name was, well, I don't actually remember his name. We called him uh, Blades because he wore the Oakley Blades, which were really cool at the time. Full uniformed officer, like 6'4", about 235. Gun on his hip, full fucking holster. And in Apple Valley, we all had guns. All of us kids that they... They said we were in gangs. The uh, San Bernardino... Back then it was San Bernardino County. And my sister was a San Bernardino County uh, Sheriff's Deputy. She's like, you know that you're in the gang files, right? I was like, what? Yeah, all you guys are. We were in the gang files because we used to have DJ groups or crews. I mean, all in all, I, I guess now I'm, I'm almost 50 years old. I can admit it. Yeah, we were a gang. I mean, basically, everything was the same bylaws other than you didn't get jumped in. There was no... We didn't beat each other up. But we stuck up for each other at all costs. So... If that guy's in a fight, you better fucking... I don't care if, if it's one-on-one. -on -one. You get in there and you drag the other guy off. You don't beat the other guy up. You drag the other guy off. Those, But that was the code of ethics for all of us growing up. And everybody, whenever you were going to get into a fight, the rules were always pre predetermined. It's like, all right, it's going to be a fist fight, right? Yeah. 
Okay, and you're going to bring two of your guys, and I'm going to bring two of my guys, usually a captain and a lieutenant, even though we weren't a gang. And uh, to make sure that if anything gets out of control, the fight's going to be stopped, and then we're going to squash it right there, right? Yeah. Okay, and that's how we did it in my day. And I saw one of my good friends get a fucking brutal beating. Worse than anything that you would ever see on UFC. I mean, within like four seconds, he was already crying for Bubba. I mean, like... But, you know, this guy was talking shit to the wrong guy, and he was like, all right, I'll fight you. And he got his... I mean, like, seriously, like, this other guy landed, like, I, I want to say, like, 30 punches on his face. And then when he went to the ground, like another 20. All within a matter of like maybe a minute. And then he's screaming, I give up, I give up, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I give up, I give up. And then Bubba, who was with me at the time, grabs the other guy, doesn't beat him up. Bubba could have fucking destroyed this guy with one punch. Bubba picks the other guy up off of him. Okay, he's done, he's had enough. They shook hands afterwards. And that was the end of it. That's how you deal with adversity. These fucking parents today, they don't care about teaching their kids how to deal with adversity. And that's why we have school shooters. All of us had guns. I had a gun on me at the fucking time. As did the other guys. None of us shot each other. None of us killed each other. The guns are there for... Hey, the rules are laid down. If you bring out a gun and start shooting, I'm going to bring out a gun and start shooting as well. So, nowadays, kids are just fucking pussies. Because the parents, they're bad parents. And you fucking Parkland teachers, fuck off. With your stupid fucking commercials. Why don't you go fight uh, childhood diabetes? That kills more kids every year than AR-15s. Why don't you go and get stricter uh, laws on who can drive a car? Why don't we get ba more stringent background checks on people that can drive a car? Cars kill way more kids every year than AR-15s. Why, uh, why don't we have background checks and licensing before people have kids because more kids die from neglect and child abuse and you know and get put in the foster system then die from AR-15s what the fuck fuck you fucking hypocrites you know Parkland mothers and fathers fuck you you don't care about fucking kids you care about your laws you're a fucking selfish asshole you don't care about kids' lives. If you care about kids' lives, you would care about everything that kills more kids a year than AR-15s. And if you don't agree with that, go fuck yourself. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Let's remember all the people that served and died for our freedoms. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye! Yeah, I don't know what I just said, but I said something.